Welcome to the Source with your host, Dr. C.T. Curry, and co host, Kobe Owens. News all across the nation. The Source. Stay in the loop in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. Work together for change in the community. A call to action to find the resources. The Source, the latest in news. Good evening, this is Dr. Curry, and welcome to The Source. I don't have my co-host with me today because he's at the Democratic National Convention having a good time making sure that we get everything in order so that uh, the election can uh, give a result that we really need it to happen. Right now, we're dealing with democracy at risk, and we want to make sure uh, that Donald Trump does not get back in. I'm going to be very, very clear. Out of all the candidates that we've had in modern history, we've never had a person such as him. But I really want to make sure that I'm giving you the news and still having our source show. Today we have a special show. I'm only going to be on just for the first part of it, and then we're going to give you an opportunity to see the live debate of the mayoral candidates, Governor Carney, as well as Ms. Velda Potter-Jones. And I'm looking forward to uh, you getting a chance to really um, hearing uh, the, the various topics they, they discussed and, 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 and their responses to the questions that were at hand. Let me just take a moment to remind you, starting tomorrow, 11 a.m. until 7, we will have uh, the early voting going on at the Powell Center. Many of the candidates will be there. I really want you to vote early. While you have free times, it's the whole week, 11 to 7 p.m. at the Powell Center. You know, there's also going to be one at Claymont uh, Community Center as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm really pushing for Wilmington uh, for us to really get out and vote. With, doesn't matter what section of the city you live in. Go to the pile starting tomorrow and you will be able to vote and be able to express your right to share in those individuals that you would like to see serve in the capacities that they're running. Now, again, you can vote for all of your candidates because the only time you get a chance to vote is once and you cannot like go back and try it again or try later. Please take a piece of paper, write down the people you are supporting because that way you can go in, you can write click their names, but I want you to do something that uh, a lot of people do not encourage people to do. I don't want you to vote for people who have not asked you to vote for them. I don't want you to vote for a person just because you got to check all the blocks. I think you should vote only for the individual who you feel will represent you well. We have some strong people in our community who have done some great things. You've heard me talk about who I've endorsed, who I've watched and seen. I don't agree on all the issues, all the, you know, earlier today you saw me interviewing uh, several of the candidates for uh, city council at large. And when I was uh, doing our interview with uh, Miss um, uh, Bracey, uh, there, was, there were times I disagreed with policy that she agreed on or some of the decisions she made. But the heart of what the person is trying to do is what I really look at. Do they have the best interests of uh, the city at heart? And those are the type of things that I'm more interested in than just saying, oh, I just don't like this person because we disagreed. Compromise is becoming very, very critical with me. I believe you have to be able to effectively know who has the best interest, even when there's a disagreement. So what I want to make sure I make clear today is that the people that I, I if you're asking me my opinion, who I think would do well in the city council at large, certainly Miss Latricia Bracey, uh, I believe she will be the stellar. She will be the star. She's had experience. She's been there. She's been on both the legislative side as well as on the um, the people side. So she understands constituency. She understands some of the dynamics. I also believe that Alex Hackett, I believe he's going to just do a phenomenal job. He's been well-trained and vetted for the season that he's in. I'm looking for forward to seeing him work in city council, new blood, fresh blood, a person who's on the ground roots, who's really working very, very hard. I also believe that Wayna Dobson is going to do well. I watched her, not just, you know, in the political ring, but she's made a lot of people great. 
She's done a whole lot to support the agenda of a lot of other people. Now she's ready to step in her own skin and she's ready to really continue the skills and the skill set that she has a, has certainly developed over the years. Um, I watched her with the Congo Funeral Home. I mean, when, when, when you're talking about real comfort, you're talking about uh, professionalism, you're talking about being able to land people in a spot where they feel like they cared about. She has been that woman. So I hope that you all will give those three an opportunity. Again, it is Letitia Bracey. I, I just believe I'm, I'm, I'm a strong firmer. I, I believe that Alex Hackett is going to be a very, very strong breath, breath of fresh air and Wayne Dobson. Then over there in the first district, Kobe Owens have been on this show. Kobe Owen is a part of this show. Matter of fact, he is this show. He brings us the news. Do we always agree? No, he's a liberal and I am not. I, I am definitely a progressive. I'm more on the side of, of in the middle, but it doesn't matter. His heart is to serve. I watch him going up and down the set, the state. He's always trying to find a way to help somebody to respond to a need, a cry. The police department, or should I say the police league or, or the, the leadership of the police, they put some horrible ads out to try to uh, harm him the last time he ran and, and, and they succeeded, but we're not going to let that happen. You're going to write his name down first district and, and we're going to get a real representative in there who care about you and not their personal interest. So I hope that you will give uh, Kobe Owens a shot. He's been very faithful. He's been faithful to the NAACP. He's been faithful in the democratic party. He's been faithful in ground roots. I believe he's going to do a great job. Now, I do know there's one more part of the election that I want to just make sure I bring to your attention, and that's that governor and lieutenant governor. Key for our freedom in the future. You have to pay attention to the governor's race. All the things that I've seen going wrong with the other candidate, uh, with the money, it, it just smells wrong. I am supporting, and I will be voting for, and I have even come all the way out to share that Matt Myers is the person that I am very much interested in. He has really been on our side. Wilmington, you cannot second guess the support that Matt Myers have provided our city. When he was just a teacher, he taught our young people, did a phenomenal job. He then became the county exec and he have really been delivering on what he's promised. And I'm hoping and trusting that when you go into the ballot box, you will check his name, give him a shot because he did a phenomenal job as county exec. He will do an incredible job as our governor and who last but certainly not least our lieutenant governor, hands down, no questions asked, Sherry Dorsey. Walker is everywhere. And, not, and she's not just busy body. She's putting legislation forward. She's getting legislation passed. No one has put on the floor more bills than she. No one has gotten passed in the amount of time that she's been around. The level of bills that she's gotten passed. She cares about community. She's one of us. She's not one of them. She's one of us. She understands the art of compromise, and I believe she's going to really do us good. So today I wore her shirt because I'm like James Brown. Say it loud. Say it because I'm proud. I'm proud to be a Sherry Dorsey, uh, 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 a Walker uh, um, um, uh, um, supporter because she has been there for us. And I want to hope and trust that y'all will send her to Dover to really continue to pursue the fight. She's well qualified. She has served in every capacity and have changed the trajectory of every capacity that she served in. I don't have a lot of time today. As we get it closest, tomorrow's a big day. Please go out and vote while you're still feeling good, while everything is, is calm, a good sunny day. Go out and vote between 11 and 7 p.m. Please vote and take your ID with you, your driver's license, your state ID. Take it with you, tell them I'm here to vote. And when you vote, Cast, take a piece of paper with you so that you will have who you're voting for and won't be confused with all the folks who are going to be standing outside. Vote for me, vote for me, vote for me and haven't done a thing for you. These are individuals that I believe who have really been a stark 
uh, reality in our community and have really done a phenomenal job with supporting the community. Again, I don't want to overstate it, but Letitia uh, Bracey, I am looking forward to seeing her return to the city council. I'm looking forward to seeing Alex Hackett, a breath of fresh new uh, air coming his way. I am also looking for Wayne Dobson to do a great job and do uh, give all of those qualities and skills that she has always done to make other people great. Now she can walk in them and help to change the trajectory of our city. Don't forget about Matt Myers. And please don't forget about Sherry Darcy Walker, who is a giant, a giant. And I support her in everything I can do to make sure she gets to that office. And I hope you will too. Real quick, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to change out our, our programming. And we're going to go to the, the debate that occurred here at Easy and Fair a couple of weeks ago. I want you to hear the mayors. I have not given too much opinion on the, the two. I, I am certainly in support of, of, of making sure you get all the information. Next week, I have on schedule to have an interview with Vela Potter. Um, and I also have a, a schedule to have an interview with Matt Myers. So we, we are really trying to just make sure all the information get out and you make the um, sound and informed decision. Thank you very much. And please, let's enjoy this time of debate. Opening remarks. Sorry about that. Opening remarks. Thank you, Kerwin. And thank you all for coming. Good evening. I'm your governor, John Carney. I'm happy to be with you uh, at Easy on Fair Baptist. Thank you, Reverend Curry, for having us. And to the Urban League and all the sponsors, thanks for sponsoring let me begin by thanking all of you for the privilege to serve as your governor for the past seven and a half years. It's been a truly an honor for me and, and also a big challenge. Over my two terms as governor, working with all of you and people across our state, we've made a lot of progress on issues that matter the most to us, education, public safety, affordable housing, and job creation. And we led Delaware through a global pandemic. We worked to make our commitment community safer with strong gun control legislation a ban on assault weapons, expanded background checks, and a permit to purchase handguns. And I signed aggressive criminal justice reform sponsored by the Legislative Black Caucus. We've invested over $100 million in affordable housing projects like Reach Riverside and extensive vacant property elimination on the east side and lower hilltop. That funding has gone to provide more opportunities for low and moderate income families and for minority contractors. I've thought long and hard about what to do next as my second term as governor comes to an end. And as I thought about the issues that matter the most, things that we were talking about, the answer was clear. I can make a bigger difference on those issues as mayor of Wilmington than I ever could in Washington where I served for six years. And I'm committed to the work. Thank you all for coming. Ms. Potter. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, those who uh, are hosting this event and this opportunity for the public to become informed. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce myself as Velda Jones Potter. My last name is actually Jones Potter, and that's how it will appear on the ballot. So, of course, I'd like to make sure people are aware of that so they look for the J. Um, so I am a native of Wilmington. I, I grew up on the east side of Wilmington. I grew up in Riverside. My father was a forklift operator. He worked 34 years for the Port of Wilmington. I'm the pro product of Wilmington Public Schools. I love this city and I'm running because I know we can do better for the people of this city. I have served this city proudly and humbly as your state treasurer and then more recently as your city treasurer. And in that capacity, the inequities that I saw and the opportunities to create a, a better living environment for everyone across every neighborhood in this city caused me to say, we need a change. And so I've stepped forward to help bring that change. And I'm pleased to be and honored to be a candidate for your mayor of the city of Wilmington, Delaware. First question, the city of Wilmington has a residency requirement for city employees. What is your position on the current resident residency requirement policy and would you change it? 
I am a firm believer that anyone who is employed by the city, who holds themselves out as interested in serving the citizens of this city, have a responsibility to live among the people in this city. And five years is not much to ask for people to reside in this city. From an economic standpoint, it only makes sense. We don't want our taxpayers turning over outside of our city. When those dollars are in our city, it helps revive our city from an economic standpoint. But most importantly, living with the decisions you make for people of this city is an important way to, uh, to, to improve and have an investment in the people that you purport to serve. So I believe wholeheartedly in that, and I frankly advocated very strongly when there was an attempt to remove the residency requirement. Governor Carney. Yeah, I support the residency requirement as well. I remember several years ago when they made the change to the current requirement, uh, five years living in the city. I think it's most important in, public, in the public safety agencies, police and fire. As I travel around the city knocking on doors, we've knocked on almost 8,000 doors by now, and talking to the residents, they care most about the safety of their neighborhoods. And it's really important to have police uh, and law enforcement that live in those neighborhoods for some period of time makes people feel more comfortable. I was talking to seniors uh, in the city today, and I asked them what was the most important thing to, to them. And they, and they said, to feel safe. Doesn't matter where you live in the city, every, across the, uh, every neighborhood in the city, including the high rises, people wanna be safe. And so I think it's important that we have some minimum requirement as we do now. It's been in effect for several years. And I don't, the only thing I, I think I would Think about is like we have a, an arborist position that's been vacant for some time, maybe some consideration for that on a very unique basis. Thank you. Yes, may I add or continue on that, please? For rebuttal? Yes. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's been said that there isn't the talent pool in the city of Wilmington, and that's been offered up as the rationale in some in, in some case for discontinuing the residency. I believe it is um, a, a, almost a disgrace to suggest that we don't have people in the city of Wilmington who are ready, willing, and able to work and fill the positions that we have here. And I'm awfully glad that the city council held firm on re retaining the five-year residency requirement and not accepting that excuse. It, it does also highlight another opportunity in my mind, and that is, uh, you know, high schools across the county, across the state have what they call pathways programs now, and they have one for public safety positions, an opportunity to really lean into that, get our young people to take the law enforcement uh, and public safety pathways so that they'll be ready uh, to, do, to take those openings when they occur. And we have significant openings across the uh, public safety positions at the moment. The next question. And I think this is gonna be a popular one with our group. The city of Wilmington is experiencing significant economic growth, particularly on the riverfront and downtown. However, many of the city's residents have not benefited from have, be have not benefited financially or with employment opportunities. As mayor, what will you do to ensure all city residents will have the opportunities to participate in economic growth in the economic growth that the city is currently experiencing? So economic opportunity starts with education. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to run for mayor of Wilmington after my term as governor is over. I'd worked really hard for two or three years to form, the, to form the Wilmington Learning Collaborative, which is a board that consisted of the three districts, Christina, Red Clay, and Brandywine, in our city. We have got to do a better job educating our children. And we've already seen the results from the last set of, of tests. 
That's where opportunity starts. And then we have to make investments in families so that the young people can grow up and get the education they need in high school on to, to college or back into the, into the workforce, just like we were talking about with public safety positions. That's where opportunity starts. It also involves contracting with minority women-owned contractors, which I'm sure we can talk about later. The economic growth in this city has absolutely not been shared equitably across the board with people. We need local hire policies. We need a, a return on investment for every single transaction that has city or tax dollars in it. Any project that's done needs to have a community benefits agreement where it's very clear that the community gains something in that process. And yes, education is important. And unfortunately, our children have been failed by the State Department of Education. We are the top five in the country for our spending on education, and we are in the bottom five for performance. And absolutely, that's a problem. And I don't believe the Learning Collab is necessarily the answer. Thank you. Yes, I do. We've worked hard to, to improve the schools in the city of Wilmington over the last couple of years. We know, everybody in this room knows, that the problem didn't start last year, five years ago, 10 years ago. It started in the mid to late 1970s when the busing order was made by the federal court. And we've never really been able to provide the education necessary for our city children. As mayor, I would be focused, as I have as governor, like a razor, making sure we're giving those children what they need. Thank you. Oh, I'd, like to re I'd like to rebut, if I may. Yes. Um, I, I believe it was said that we worked hard over the last couple of years. This problem has been going on for a long time, and we do agree, I agree, that it goes back to the, uh, the busing of our children and the removal of our schools from our neighborhood. So this may or may not be a popular proposal, but this is what I believe. Wilmington needs to be its own school district once again. And the city of Wilmington has been able to rely on federal funding from the American Rescue Plan act, excuse me, for the past few years to make up gaps in its finances. But the money is going away. How would you address the potential shortfalls in the city's budget? Well, I have a bit of experience in doing that in my capacity as state treasurer and city treasurer. And I have a bit of a reputation for finding waste and recouping dollars. In the first two years as city treasurer, my small team of seven recouped $20 million for this city, just out of our one department. So with access and leadership over all 12 departments, I'm very confident that we will find significant savings, efficiencies, return of dollars to the city. But of course, we've got to expand our tax base. Of course, we have to expand our tax base and bring more business to the city, to rate, bring revenue into the city. And I'm confident in our ability to do that as well. Thank you. Governor Carter. Thank you, Kerwin. When I first took office almost eight years ago, we had a $400, billion, a $400 million budget. We turned that $400 million budget deficit into a $500 million surplus. Mr. Jones, Ms. Jones Potter is right. We need to expand our revenue base. The way that to do that is to grow the economy. In order to grow the economy, you have to attract new businesses to our city, and we have to enable businesses that are there currently to expand. 
And that's why the uh, project to bring Insight and their expansion to Rodney Square is a big deal for our city. It's millions of dollars of revenue and it's good jobs and it takes the pressure off uh, folks that have difficulty paying their property tax bills because it's additional revenue. As governor, I also, with the support of the General Assembly, added $5 million to the city budget. Yes, may I? We have a rebuttal? Yes, I do. The state of Delaware in studies ranks at the very bottom in terms of economic growth. Negative, the only state with negative growth, one, negative 1.25% 1 to be exact. One of the things that I believe we need to do much better as a city is to ensure that when we are growing businesses, and oftentimes we're giving tax incentives for them to do that, that there is a financial return on investment to the city, and that that math is computed over the life of that agreement. That's time. Thank you, Ms. John The facts are these. Over the last eight years, we've created 30,000 new jobs in our state. I just came from a meeting of the Delaware Prosperity Partnership, $2 billion of capital investment. We need to make sure that that investment goes to our city of Wilmington and the jobs benefit city residents. But let's get our facts straight in terms of job growth and income growth and capital investment in our city. Happy to provide those numbers. According to multiple studies on housing in Wilmington, many residents, particularly those, particularly those living on low incomes, spend more than one third of their income on housing. How will you use the powers of your office to help people stay in their homes and people living on lower incomes afford to live in the city? What changes would you make to bring housing policy more in line with your vision? Governor Carter. Yeah, so my vision is to invest in every neighborhood in our city, and we've done exactly that over the last eight years. We've made the largest investments in housing in the city of Wilmington in our history, including over $100 million of state and federal money in Reach Riverside. I was at a neighborhood association meeting the other night on the east side, and a woman towards the end, she put up her hand and she said, I used to be a resident of, of Riverside, and now I bought a home in the new community, and it is way better. And it's way better because they took a comprehensive approach to improving that community. New housing, taking down the old, new community center at Kingswood, assistance and programs for children over at the teen warehouse, that's the way that you address investment in neighborhoods across our city, and that's exactly what my vision would be and has been as governor. Thank you. Ms. Jones Potter. So my vision would, would be loftier. It would be that more people in Wilmington will be homeowners so that they're not subject to the um, excessive rents that are charged by landlords. We have long since needed to implement rent control here in this city. And it's become even more uh, a detriment as the rate of rents have gone up with the high-end condos that have been built, with the absentee landlords who are now taking advantage of that market trend and evicting people so that they can re do minor refurbishments and then double the rent. So my vision is that we will create more jobs so that it becomes an issue of affordability that people can then afford to not rent but own their homes and that, and that we make an investment in this city in helping people become homeowners. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. jones Potter. Did you have a rebuttal to that, sir? Yeah, in order to bring the cost and price of homes down in the city of Wilmington, You've got to increase the supply. And that's why the investments that we've been making in the city, using state and federal and a little bit of city money, have been really important. Has it brought the prices down? No, not yet, because you need more supply to bring the prices down. What it has done, like in Reach Riverside, it's re-envisioned and remade a whole community. 
If you go on the east side, you see whole rows of houses that were dilapidated on Bennett Street that are gone with new houses on the west side. If I had more time, I'd tell you what's happened on the west side. Is there an opportunity? Yes. Rebuttal? Well, interesting, Bennett Street is near and dear to my heart. Bennett Street is the three and a half million dollar project that should have been completed now 14 years ago by the Wilmington Housing Partnership that still hasn't accounted for that three and a half million dollars that was never invested there. So the other thing that we have to do is make sure we are accountable for the dollars that we say are going to go somewhere and that we in fact make sure they go there. Thank you. Ms. Jones Potter, this question is for you. Candidates say, candidates say they want to improve education in the city. But Brandywine, Red Clay, and Christina Colonial and Newcastle County Votech are all separate entities. And the city has no district, no direct control over school policy. So how would you improve public education in the city? Well, I think I've stated my position. I believe we need a city district. And I believe we need to get on to the business of working to get us there. Now, we are, there are some things that we can and need to and will do in the interim as we work toward that. Early childhood education is suffering tremendously. We've got to make sure we are, are investing and in nurturing incentivizing employers even to invest in early childhood education. Because if we're sending children in to the start of school at kindergarten who are already deficient in their learning, then we're setting them up for failure at that three, uh, third grade mark. So I believe early childhood education is something that as a city we can help support. But creating a mandate to the state for either performing, uh, uplifting our children's performance, or as I believe, give the children of the city back to the city with its own district properly funded. Thank you. Governor Corn. Yeah, my solution would be to get Christina School District out of the city because they're doing a terrible job on the east side and, and center of the city, other parts of the district uh, city. And then come up with what, what many people have recommended, which is the river plan. Half the city goes to Red Clay and half the city goes to Brandywine. That's something that the Reading Commission is looking at and I believe there ought to be a process around that. But a, a, a single district will get us right back into a federal court again. J Street has assured me of that. We've invested, we've increased our investment in child, uh, early childhood education by twice. $129 million that goes to the city of Wilmington and communities across the state. We've invested over $150 million in the education of our city. We need to get better results for the dollars that we're investing in the city. It is not a question of resources. If you change, if you compare the, the cost per child in the, in the city, it's about $33,000 a year. It's about 25,000 in the suburban schools. Are there rebuttals? Yes. It, it, we agree that there has been an extreme increase in spending in education without the commensurate performance. There is a high cost in administration and transportation alone. All the buses that we see traveling, the maintenance, the capital investment in those, where children could walk to school if those schools are right in their neighborhood, where their parents could participate in their support and in their education if they're allowed to in their own neighborhood. Thank you, that's time. We have another rebuttal here, Governor Carney. So the fact is that for children from preschool to grade five, we do have school, our children in the city of Wilmington. I live right behind Warner School. The children that go to Warner School live in that neighborhood and they come from across the river. We need to have better options for the children once they get to high school. On the other side of town, 
you go K to eight in the city of Wilmington. Those are essentially schools in our neighborhoods where our parents can get to for meetings and, and, and the like. Hello, my name is Kobe Owens and I'm running for the Democratic nomination for the City Council 1st District right here in Wilmington. Um, I am running on a platform of addressing our affordable housing crisis, making sure we're helping both homeowners and renters both live in this city, live in safe and affordable housing. I'm running on a platform to address affordable housing, but also looking at quality of life issues, making sure that our street signs are up, our streets are fit, our sidewalks aren't cracked, and making sure our communities are safer for everyone. And lastly, I am running on a sustainable, sustainable development an economic growth platform, one that makes sure we're investing into our neighborhoods and our best investment that we can make is investing into our youth, making sure that we are preparing them for our future. And then lastly, expanding senior programming to make sure that they continue to age in place right here in the first district, in the city of Wilmington. I'm doing this for y'all. Vote for Kobe Owens. Governor Carney, this question is for you. Transitioning from one administration to another can be a rocky road for some cities. Can you explain how you are prepared to assume office on day one? And what would the first 100 days of your administration look like? So first of all, top to bottom review, all the administrative procedures, spending, budget, all that kind of things, things that you don't know. The fact of the matter is the, the mayor, the governor sets the tone, hires the people that do, do the work. And that's what I would look into, have a process for include, including people in our community, a very diverse uh, administrative staff. I have the most diverse cabinet of any administration in the history of our state. I have appointed two African, first two African Americans to the Supreme Court. I've appointed more judges to the courts than any other governor in the history of our state. And it's that kind of approach, an approach that understands that we have to govern as a, a group, that we have to govern a whole city with every neighborhood being included in that. And that's the approach that I would take. What are we going to do in, on the north side? What are we going to do with housing? What are, what are, most of it is having partnerships with people in the state government and other nonprofit organizations. Thank you. So um, I, I have had experience transitioning in roles over my career from the corporate world to, uh, to government. And in that first 100 days, I will audit every aspect of the city to ensure that we are clear what our status and our standing and our position is. We will take a, a total operations assessment, but most important is I will reestablish a sense of, of, of service in our city government and a sense of community in our city. That's what's really missing is we, we have lost the sense of Wilmington as a community, and it takes a leader to establish that. Someone who believes that that's important, someone who has experienced this city from every neighborhood within it, and that's what I will do as the prime focus in my first 100 days. I'll tell you. Governor Carney has a rebuttal. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing I'm gonna look really hard at. As we travel and talk to people on porches across the city, like I said, over 7,500. People are very frustrated with city government not being able to solve the pro little problems they have in their neighborhood. The dead tree down the street, a pothole in the street in front of my house or in my community. We need to have better response from the city government on those kinds of issues. It's really the, the blocking and tackling of city government. And that's the first, one of the first things that I would look at, at if, as I'm elected mayor. In that first 100 days, I will establish the Office of Neighborhood Development, whose purpose and mission will be to engage the communities all across the city 
to revitalize and re-energize civic associations because they are our connection to the community and to help surface those issues within the community, each one unique that needs attention and need to be addressed and help those communities make that happen. Thank you, Ms. James Carter. This next question is for you, ma'am. Thanks. Over the past few years, we have seen multiple incidents where members of the Wilmington police have broken the community trust. We have seen a lack of true meaningful change at the state level when it comes to police accountability. In 2003, the Delaware NAACP and ACLU filed, class action, filed a class action lawsuit against the city of Wilmington Police Department because of this. How would you describe the effectiveness of the city's police accountability mechanisms and what concrete steps are you prepared to take to create meaningful accountability for misconduct within the Wilmington Police Department? We have got to do better at the police and community relationship. And that starts with transparency and access to information that people need to have about our law enforcement officers. We entrust them the ability to take lives and so we need to know how they're performing and doing as they do that. Citizens deserve to know that. So at the state level, I support changing the law so that that transparency and information is available. At the local level within the City of Wilmington Police Department, it's very much a matter of accountability. Everyone is expected to perform their job, including our officers, our firefighters, our our trash collectors, everyone in the city, and they will be hold, held accountable to how they do that. Thank you. <laughs> Governor Carney. Yeah, as I said a, a few minutes ago, there's nothing more important than residents across the that are city than the safety, their safety in their homes and their neighborhoods. But you can't have effective law enforcement unless there's trust and respect between law enforcement officers and the people that uh, in the neighborhoods where they're serving. And so that's a critical requirement. The fact of the matter is we did pass legislation initiated by the Legislative Black Caucus several years ago in 2020. We de they developed the criminal justice reform agenda that I signed into law. It included a ban on chokeholds, choke updating the state use of force statute, and the required use of body cameras by every agency across the state. There's nothing more important to transparency than those body cameras. It was something that we required by law and funded across the state. Do you have a rebuttal? Uh, yes, I, I believe that it is extremely important that we hire and develop police officers who are in touch and in tune with the community. And I believe that if we, we have downtown visions in downtown, why don't we have neighborhood visions helping in those neighborhoods, particularly those where the crime and the challenges are most prevalent. And so if we have them, then we have a pipeline of people from the community into our next police class. What? One more thing important to this issue and our response to it. In 2020, I issued Executive Order 41 requiring law enforcement de-escalation and implicit bias training and increased transparency around the use of force protocols across the state. That's critically important to guaranteeing that kind of respect that's necessary to do the kind of policing that we need in our city of Wilmington. Thank you. <laughs> Governor Carney, this question is for you. In 2024, the Wilmington Reparations Task Force issued its final report. This current administration has yet to implement any recommendations from the report. Have you reviewed the report and what recommendations do you agree with? If, if you have not reviewed it, 
When do you plan on doing so? And do you support reparations for black residents? I have not re reviewed the report, and I would be very interested in how they structure who pays these reparations. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me for a city whose residents are primarily black or brown to pay taxes for reparations to folks that are primarily black, black or brown. So how that would all work, I think, is important. How do you determine who gets the reparations? And I would be looking at those factors as I reviewed that report. Ms. Jones Potter. Yes, I have reviewed the report and I wholeheartedly believe in reparations. A lot of what we see in our community, the, the black community, is a result of that lack of economic opportunity and access over generations that has not been available to them. So it, it, it is an opportunity to, to level up and provide uh, an, an economic base for a population who, who helped build this nation, this state, this city. And so yes, I, I believe that it is time that that issue be reckoned with, hopefully at the federal level and, and very much locally. So I would just say this, it certainly makes way more sense to do it federally, where you've got a huge national tax base with people of all color and creed that would be paying for those reparations once you determine how you're gonna distribute them, than to tax city residents for that purpose when you would be providing some of those, those funds to people that live in the city. Does it, that part, does, I'm not sure how that works. Gentrification is real, and there is a concern within the public safety sector of the Wilmington Fire Department that the department isn't representative of the, of the community in which it serves. What would you do to ensure that diversity is reflected in new hires, retention, and leadership? The last question went to Governor Carney, so this question will go to Ms. Jones Potter. Yes, so I, I believe we need to expose our young people to career opportunities of all sorts. And when I was a kid, most kids, when you ask them what do you want to be when you grow up, they'd say a police officer or a firefighter. So I think we want our children to see that as a noble calling now. And so some of the things I would do is connect our officers with our children in ways that they can see that and aspire to that as, as a career option in a way that they'd like to serve and make their community better. And then we have to make sure that the pipeline into the city, the application process is not prohibitive or culturally biased in a way that it's not allowing a level playing field for those who apply. And that the leadership in that fire department is engaging and has his, his or her people engaging with the community in a way that it's a place people want to be and want to serve. Thank you. Governor Carney. Yeah, I, I, I frankly happen to agree with uh, Ms. Jones Potter on this. I think exposing people to public safety uh, positions and careers is incredibly important. I think having those pathways uh, for our city children as they go into high school, whether it's Howard High School or some of the suburban high schools that they go to, I think it's really important that we have the residency required on the front end so you can attract those folks who live in the city, who are, are familiar with the neighborhoods, that we can incentivize other younger people to do the same kind of work. And I think the exposure, as Ms. Joan Potter says, is incredibly important. That's how people, I, th I think we ought to do the same thing with construction contractors. Encourage the young people to go to Howard and to go to Del Castle as they already do, pick up a trade, turn that trade into a business, and you know, rise, accumulate health, wealth, and stay in the city and buy a house. The 
did you have a rebuttal? Yeah. Yes, um, I think the question also uh, asked about retention. And, and so to that, I would seek to understand why are we losing officers? Why are they not staying with us here in the city? Um, and, and, and just try to address those issues, whatever they might be, um, be it compensation, be it uh, schedule, work-life balance, uh, for them, um, hoping that they're not being lured from some of our other uh, firefighter organizations, but understand what's going on with that and address that specifically. I would just, in the same vein, I would just make sure that we have uh, child care opportunities available for those uh, men and women in the, those two departments and for the rest of the uh, city employees and frankly uh, people that work in the city. That's critically important uh, for people deciding where they're going to work and who they're going to work for. This next question um, is for you Governor Carney but it just jumped out on me um, and I think it's very important. Elders are losing their homes. They do not have enough in regards to finance to maintain their homes and keep their homes here in the city of Wilmington. What kind of action would you put in place to assist them with their, mor with their monthly mortgage cost? Yeah, so there are state programs that do that already, but what I would, one of the uh, programs that I think has been very attractive to me that the city is doing right now, is they have a program, it's limited for sure, and this is where you need a mayor who can get resources from other governments and from nonprofit agencies to do changes, upgrades to the front of their house, to their systems, their heating system, to enable young pe or older people to stay in their homes. Making those investments are not just an investment in that individual homeowner and that uh, senior citizen, but it's an investment in the whole neighborhood because it brings the neighborhood up. Same thing with vacant housing. Vacant housing, getting uh, eliminating vacant houses is an investment in that particular person who buys it. It's an investment in that minority contractor and it's investment in the whole neighborhood by removing the blight that's on that block. So it kind of goes hand in hand. But I, I've witnessed it on the east side and it's a program that works. Ms. Jones Potter. Uh, so there are a lot of costs that go into owning a home and certainly for our seniors who tend to be on a fixed income any increase in any of those costs makes it difficult for them to, to maintain their home. The cost of water out of our own city water system happens to be one of those. And so I would look very closely at how we can bring that cost down so that it, that is not one of the things that burdens them. Electricity, our public uh, service commission at the state level, um, I think needs to do a better job of helping uh, re, uh, maintain and control costs of electricity to, to our, that our seniors uh, experience. There's an opportunity for us to bridge the need for apprenticeship and training with the need of, especially our seniors, for home repair. Imagine if we have people who are learning plumbing, electric work, preparing homes of our seniors as they do that. So I think there's an opportunity for us to do both those at the same time. Uh, go ahead. Did I, am I overstepping my rebuttals? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're a little long. Um, if you'd like to address some of that in your closing remarks, feel free. Um, this will be the final question from the audience. Why should veterans vote for either of you? Especially, especially since Governor Carney stopped veterans from having a cabinet secretary for Veterans Affairs. Not sure what uh, they're talking about there, but a veteran should vote for me for all the reasons that I've uh, been talking about during this hour, plus almost an hour and a half here. As the next mayor, I will put a laser focus on public safety in our city. 
Everywhere I go, every neighborhood, every front porch, senior citizens I talk to today understand that having clean and safe neighborhoods has to be a number one priority. It's the best for all of us. We have to have good jobs and expanding economy. Otherwise, we don't have money to spend on all the different things that we've been talking about tonight. We have to involve our young people. To, we gotta improve the educational opportunities they have, and we've gotta involve them in looking at jobs, public safety jobs, and police and fire. We need to build every neighborhood in our city up. We need to make it a one city approach to everything we do, and that's what I would do as your next mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. John Potter. Yes. I, I have come to, to learn and appreciate how many veterans we have in our city and their needs. Many of them are experiencing homelessness. Mental health support is essential for our veterans. Uh, they are an important constituent base. And I would have an advisor to the office of the mayor who is a veteran who can speak to and help us understand those needs and give us some advice on what we can do as a city to help that population. They are a constituent base with, with a unique experience that deserves specific attention, and I would give them that. Okay, now it is time for closing remarks. As we mentioned before, closing remarks will be 90 seconds, and we will begin with Ms. Jones Potter. Well, I do thank you all for listening and uh, thank Governor Carney for, uh, for coming and, and having this opportunity to, to share and speak with you. Um, I, I would like to, I guess, take this time to emphasize two things that are, I think, are really critical and important. One is the, the horror that we have in not having the Port of Wilmington here in Wilmington. Like somebody may say, well, just let go of that. Well, it's very difficult for me to because that's where so many of the jobs are and could be. That could be the economic engine of our entire city, the tax base. I am, if it's not gonna be here, then yes, better somewhere else than not here, but I'm running for mayor of the city of Wilmington. So I would want it to be here in Wilmington where it should be and where, but for Governor Carney not signing off on the, the agreement that would put it here, that port could have been here some nine years ago. And then the port workers who have lost their jobs and are now struggling would not be. The economy, bring it back. The economy that would build up along that corridor and all of the spin-off businesses that would happen as a result of it. That kind of a tax base for this city is paramount. Why is it not here? Governor Carney. Yeah, the Port of Wilmington is here. It's alive, it's doing well. It's creating jobs and wealth for so many people in our city. I'm sure you've heard me say that in order for our state to be successful, Wilmington has to be successful. And for Wilmington to be successful, every neighborhood in our city has to be strong. And for neighborhoods to be strong, the, the residents there need good jobs and they need affordable places to live. I'm running for mayor to bring my experience to meet the challenges that we've talked about tonight. We need a mayor who will listen to all the residents. My campaign staff and I have knocked on over 7,000 doors in every neighborhood across our city in the past several months. Every day on porches across the city, we hear residents that we hear what residents want for their neighborhood. Everyone we talk to cares deeply about our city. We all want clean and safe neighborhoods, good schools, and a vibrant and healthy place to live. We want fairness and respect for every resident. That's what I'll give you as your next mayor. And so I'll work to improve our city schools, to expand access for affordable housing, to protect taxpayer dollars, to invest in small and minority owned businesses. I'm confident that we can build a better city for all of us if we work together. 
but only if we work together. And I will provide the leadership necessary to do so. Thank you, Ms. Jones Potter, for being with us tonight. Thank you. You've been watching The Source with host Dr. C.T. Curry and co-host Kobe Owens. Tune in every Sunday at 5 p.m. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for the latest episodes.